Hi guys, it's Omer from MMOs.com, and I'm going to do another quick weekly news recap of all major MMO news and announcers for the week ending November 14th, 2016. This is episode number 69 of the recap, oh baby. And the first bit of news this week comes from Lineage Eternal, and it's a biggie. Closed beta for the game is finally set to begin on November 30th. It's the first ever closed beta for the game and a real sign that Lineage Eternal is finally moving closer and closer towards full release. Our closed beta begins on November 30th and runs until December 4th and will be available exclusively in South Korea. The game takes place 7 years after the first Lineage game and there's a ton of lore and other gameplay information available on the official Lineage Eternal website. But it's finally happening and that's pretty big news because it's a game a lot of people have been looking forward to for a while. They first revealed it years and years ago and it's finally happening. Uh, I'm curious to see if they're going to ditch that promise of making it multi-platform because uh, it, was, it was supposed to be playable equally on PC as well as mobile and tablet and basically everything you know, on the same world. So I'm curious how that's actually going to play out. But yeah, we'll know more later. Next up, speaking of games that are finally happening, we have Maple Story 2 finally happening in the West. There is still no official announcement, but Nexon did post a job listing for a Maple Story 2 product manager in their California office. So yes, they're hiring people to work on Maple Story 2 for Western markets. So yeah, again, no official word just yet. So I suspect it's still probably a good while off. But I'm glad to see Maple Story 2 finally making progress in the West. The game was never super popular in Korea, and they kind of quietly stopped mentioning the game as it's not even appearing on Nexon's G Star lineup, but they are quietly working on a western release date for Maple Story 2 so glad to hear it finally as a big fan of the original Maple Story. I might have to try it but I still have to wait a while so there's that. Moving right along we have a pretty big update for Black Desert Online. They're merging all the servers into one mega server on November 30th with a staggering 36 channels on it. So basically everything will be combined, it'll create a mega server and I actually like the direction they're going with that. It'll still be segmented into channels but being able to play with your friends is probably the most important part of playing MMO in my opinion so being able to easily play with your friends on the same server is definitely a plus. And in addition to that, this last week the Valkyrie has awakened. So now they get a new weapon, the Lance and Shield. So an update for the Valkyrie and later at the end of the month, one mega server. But definitely a lot going on in Black Desert right now. Good stuff. I suspect the merger is probably because the player base has declined a bit, but I still like the fact that they're merging all the servers into one mega server. It's just a good decision in my mind. Moving right along, Eloa is coming back. The game is being relaunched through Game and & Game, and they've actually already had their first round of closed beta testing, which just wrapped up on November 13th. And for you guys that don't remember, Eloa was available from WebZen for some time, but unfortunately the game was not popular enough for WebZen to keep running it. They shut it down, and it looks like Game & Game is picking up the baton. Uh, game & Game does pick up the baton for a lot of failed games, and I suspect they'll be able to run it for quite a while, as they keep, they keep a lot of games going. They are a bit of an MMO necromancer themselves. Uh, the closed beta was only available to those living in North and South America. I'm curious to see if there's any IP restrictions on uh, full launch, but we'll learn more when that happens. Uh, no word on exactly when that is, though. But yeah, LOA will definitely be back. Moving right along, a bit of positive news for Shadowverse fans. The game is getting a new expansion near the end of the year. It hasn't been officially announced yet, but it has been confirmed by Psy Games in a recent interview with TechRaptor that Shadowverse will indeed be getting a new expansion relatively soon by the end of the year. This shouldn't be too surprising as the game is doing really well on Steam right now, averaging over 6,000 concurrent players, and there's of course the mobile side as well. I'm still playing Shadowverse and I'm loving it, so I'm glad that they're actually launching a new expansion. So I've already, already, I've already seen almost all the cards in the game, I, I pretty much have, but I'm having a lot of fun with this one and I'm, I'm glad to hear more expansions are on the way. Up next we have a new game that just went free to play this last week, uh, versus Battle of the Gladiator from a company called Netker. The game did launch in early access as a buy to play game, but as the player base dwindled, it did decide to go free to play just this last week. Unfortunately, even as a free to play game, its player base is still quite small. It was averaging about zero players online earlier, and now it's getting about 30 to 50. So there are people playing the game right now, it's just it's still a very small number, but the game did just go free to play, so it still has some hope. And you can tell from the video in the background, the game is different. We've seen a lot of free to play games, but nothing quite like Versus Battle of the Gladiator before. Up next, signups open up for Worlds Adrift's biggest playtest ever. Signups for the upcoming playtest began last week and run until November 18th. The actual playtest itself will begin later this month. And for those that never heard of Worlds Adrift, it's an upcoming sandbox MMO that's supposed to allow players to actually shape the game's universe. Uh, more will be known when I actually play the game myself. Moving right along, a pretty huge update for Warframe. Uh, the game's largest update of the year, The War Within, has finally launched this last week and introduces with it new missions, new planets, and a new cinematic quest. There's a lot to explore with this, including new weapons, new customizations, and a bunch more. A Warframe is still doing remarkably well on Steam. It's easily one of the most successful free-to-play games of the last few years. As the game has maintained a pretty huge player base since the game's launch. In fact, with the launch of the update, player base has jumped to 68,000 concurrent users, whereas pre-update it was only about 25,000 max. So the update got a lot of people coming back to the game, and fans of Warframe should be happy with all the new stuff to do in uh, The War Within. 
Next up, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds just launched at the Alpha 2 this last week, and it's a game being developed by a company called Player Unknown and being published by Bluehole. Bluehole is a company probably best known for Terra. And as you probably thought from the video in the background, this is yet another one of those uh, King of the Kill style games where players on an island and it's a Battle Royale style game. Seeing another dedicated game in this genre is not too surprising, as uh, King of the Kill is doing really well. I suspect the reason Blue Hole got interested in this project is they did want to diversify their games. Uh, they're best known for Terra once again, but again, they have AVA now, and now they have uh, Player Unknown's Battleground. So here's to see how this one will do. Uh, Alpha for the game will be running on Saturdays and Sundays only, and from now until December 4th. And the game will also be available on consoles at one point. It won't be free to play. It'll be a buy to play game. Also in uh, FPS related news, we have Overwatch and it's having a free weekend on November 18th till 21st on all platforms. So yeah, you want to play Overwatch for free, you can check it out this weekend for free on PC or uh, on console. Up to you. I still maintain my crazy theory that the game will eventually go free to play and within a year, but we'll see. And Overwatch is still killing it, it's still surprisingly popular, and they just released uh, a Sombra on the PTR this last week as well, so that's good stuff. Next up, a bit of update for Blast. It looks like the game is not being abandoned by Area Games just yet. As the representative of Area Games updated the community over at blast-source.com and they explained the game's beta delays. Apparently they're working on the game's combat system. To hear a representative of Area Games post on this community website explain the reason behind some delays does show that Area has not given up on the project just yet. So there remains hope for Area Games' Blast. The website is still down, but perhaps they launched the website a bit prematurely. Uh, next up, we have Neverwinter Storm King's Thunder Sea of Moving Ice, the latest expansion pack to the game, which just launched on PC. The update's key features include a new adventure zone, new means of travel, fishing mini games, artifact weaponry, treasure hunting, and much more. And unfortunately, as always, those playing on PS4 and Xbox One will have to wait until early 2017 to play the Sea of Moving Ice update. Neverwinter was one of the first free to play MMORPGs to really embrace consoles, and for that reason, it's still doing pretty well. Next up, Zone 4 began its first round of closed beta testing this last week on Game & Game. Yes, uh, the same uh, Zone 4 that used to be available ages ago on I believe OG Planet, I could be wrong. It was called Zone 4 Fight District back then. And it is being picked up, and it is picked up by Game & Game. Uh, they are an MMO Necromancer, as again, they are bringing back Eloa, and they brought back a lot of dead games. The closed beta ran from November 10th till the 14th, so yes, it is unfortunately gone already, but I'm sure there'll be another round of closed beta testing in the future. It is a bit odd to see this game back uh, all of a sudden after so many, uh, I guess, years of being gone. The next and last bit of news this week comes from Square Enix as well as Machine Zone. Looks like Final Fantasy XV, the mobile MMO, is going to happen. Square Enix hired Machine Zone to help develop a game, uh, Final Fantasy XV MMO. Uh, Machine Zone is the company best known for their two strategy games, Game of War and Mobile Strike. So yeah, the guys that made Mobile Strike and Game of War will be making a Final Fantasy 15 mobile MMO. No word on exactly what the game is going to be or when it's going to launch, but all we know it is based on the Final Fantasy 15 franchise. I'm just hoping it's not another city builder, but we'll have to find out then. Again, nothing else is known about the game, just that they're being it's being worked on. That's all we got. Anyway guys, I'll see you guys tomorrow for the podcast. That's it this week. Later guys.